Uh, do we have all three tigers here yes, today, right? We do. Oh, we have all three tigers. Thank you, Roshan. Please give him a, a round of applause. This is the director, Roshan. Thank you so much again for uh, attending our wonderful. This is actually the first time we've shown this movie in, in, here in LA. So I just flew down here about two hours ago from Seattle. So I thank uh, Super Kevin Love for putting all this together and a wonderful line dance in the ceremony uh, and just being uh, so hospitable uh, to us uh, here in our wonderful first time. Actually, we've been able to see this in front of the big screen and in front of a crowd here in LA. So thank you so much again. So I'll start with Matthew Page. Ron Yulon, who plays me. Uh, Alan, who plays Danny. Yeah. Yeah. Mikhail Shannon Jenkins, who plays Ajin. Let's take a stand. We got Philip Dang in the house. Yeah. One of the uh, wonderful uh, gentlemen, nice gentlemen in the pool. You know? <laughs> we have our wonderful cinematographer, Sean Mayor. And we have our stunt coordinator, Kerry Wong. Yeah. And we have our producer, Yuji Okamoto. Yeah. And producer, Dan Gildar. Yeah. And bring down our producer, Michael Velasquez. Bit with the uh, Q&A like you know ask some of the, the cast and crew some of the, some of the questions and then I'll, we'll guess like, we'll open it up to uh, uh, some of the crowd out there so um, I guess Val I guess you're, you're you're my first victim okay yes so I um, you've heard me say it I absolutely absolutely love this movie um, I was joking with Carrie um, I really wasn't Carrie my wife is here I was I wasn't I wasn't hiding somewhere <laughs> when I, we went out for drinks the other day but um uh, it was it was one of the moments that really hit me, and it's kind of great uh, watching it again for the second time today. And it really still hit me um, that moment when um, when he talks to his son. He says, "Look, you know," and I, these are my two crazy kids here in the front, by the way. Um, that when he talks to his son and says, "Like, look, this is what I want you to do, and this is how you fight for something honorable and defend the people." And a lot of my students are out in the crowd too, and so. Yeah, I feel that it's, it was such a great moment and it still hit me in the feels, even watching it again, I think like maybe a month or two later. Um, so how, how did you start coming together with the, the first idea with Paper Tigers and how did you decide that you, this is the kind of movie you wanted to make? Yeah, thank you. Um, I would say when I grew up, uh, kind of my new two passions were filmmaking and martial arts. So, uh, you know, all those things are really fond memories in terms of just the the training and the studying of both crafts and arts, but also the friends that we make, the filmmaking friends, but also the Kung Fu clan, the family. Uh, the things that I remember more is, you know, the hangouts, you know, yum cha after, right? After you practice is more, actually for me, more memorable than doing the drills and the practicing. <laughs> Maybe I'm that type of student, but I just remember those were more, those were things that stay in the heart a lot longer. So that type of culture is something that I always hold dear to me. And, uh, and it's one thing for, particularly for film, when I started going to as a profession, uh, you know, it's a business and sometimes there's all these negative aspects of it. And so I was feeling a little burnt down. And uh, I kind of wanted to kind of look back inside and kind of think about the things that inspired me when I was young. Is it important anymore? Am I jaded? Am I more cynical? Or will those things still have something that, you know, have value? And so it was a little bit kind of opening up and looking back in my own life and thinking about what martial arts mean and also film and just trying to understand and try to be able to create some story that plays tribute to all of that. Oh, Matt, um, I, I personally went nuts when I, I said, wait a minute, I know that guy. <laughs> it's Master Ken. <laughs> so my first personal question is, why was there not a, a groin stump in your fight scene? No, <laughs> I've seen some comments online already disappointed about the lack of groin stump. <laughs> um, I've heard wonderful, wonderful things that uh, and you know, almost that you know, you were stealing the show when you were when you're when you're absolutely your comedic chops were just flying sharp. Um, and I know that you also have a uh, martial arts background, correct? Uh, uh, Kempo, correct? Yeah, uh, uh, American Kempo, Okinawan Kempo. Yeah. Was it hard for you? Because I I think that when we saw you on 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 screen, I think a lot of people that know you, they think, okay, it's Master Ken. I want to do something funny. I want him to do something ridiculous. But then when we saw it towards the end of the movie, we see that you know. 
that his character really takes a much more dramatic and more serious role, and you were able to bring that. Was it was it different because since you're so used to comedy, or I would say that's just a testament, uh, really, to the to the script. You know, um, the, the the development of the character was on the page, and so it was it was kind of just playing what was there, which was which was great, um, and then the. Uh, having the freedom to play around with uh, a lot of the comedic stuff that we had to do um, about kind of let us, you know, we do one the way it's scripted and then let us just kind of run and see what we could come up with and, and, uh, and came up with some really fun uh, stuff run. Uh, on my first day, uh, challenged me because I was nervous and he started making fun of me and it wasn't in the script and I was I started to lose track of what I was supposed to do so that happened right before lunch so like at lunch I like kind of went away to myself I was like he can't be making funny like that you gotta be funny you gotta like think of some insults so I spent all of lunch thinking of some stuff that I could say back to him but when we started shooting the rest of the scene and I came up with some stuff and then it kind of set the tone for the whole thing. I was actually kind of grateful that he kind of surprised me like that because uh, it set the tone for the rest of the shoot, which was great. Ron obviously needs almost no introduction. Um, I know you've been doing this for a wonderful long time and we've supported your work for many, many years. Um, me personally, I, I really, really uh, related to your character the most because uh, for those of you guys who know me in Kong Si Pai, I'm, I'm the big eater. And so <laughs> I'm the guy who <laughs> threw down seven bowls of, of wonton noodles in, uh, in Hong Kong. So, um, how did you feel be able to be able to take this role and really, you know, run with it the way you did, and and bring such a great, strong humanity to to this character? Like, was it, you know, was it different? Because I know that most of us, like, we've seen you, like, you know, either in, in you know, in action films and beating up people, and this one, you know, we really felt. I, I personally, I felt it was such a great performance by you, and we really, I, I was like, oh man, that's that's me up there. That's this is this is so great, you know. Um, no, uh, yeah, I appreciate that. Um, I have to say, that, like Matt said, it, it was really um, we had a great blueprint, you know. And, and Val wrote a wonderful script. I, I actually got introduced uh, to the script through UG, and and having a director that kind of lets you play, like Matt said, like it, it was like it's the f we we actually met. We all met about a week and a half before we had to shoot, so we had to do rehearsals and um, in LA and. Already, we just felt like the synergy, right? And like, yeah, that first day was 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 a lot of fun because after lunch, <laughs> Matt came back with some with some you know really good jokes, and <laughs> we just kept going and going, and like it was one of those things where we were trying not to laugh, you know, because because the crew was laughing, like you just heard, like you know, throughout the whole thing. But but no, I, I think you know Bao's blueprint really, I think, inspired all of us, um, and for me personally. I, I love the character of Hingo. When I first read it, I just like it was like a page turner for me because I, I res it resonated with me. You know, also, you know, we're at that age too. You know, or <laughs> it's not the same. You know, in our twenties and stuff. So, so for me, um, it, it, yeah, it was it was like and, and um, Bao. Like I, I had gained. Like I just come back from a project in New York, and and it was during those rehearsals. Bao was just sitting across from me, going, "Dude, um, you're gonna gain more weight, right?" I'm like going, "I'm like 30." Five pounds, Val. Like, 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 yeah, but you still look like I need you to be fat. <laughs> I, need you, I need you to be fat. I'm just going. All right, so I was able to gain like another thirty some pounds, like within the next two weeks. So wow, it was, it was it was crazy. Yeah, thanks, Val. Mm. <laughs> awesome. Elaine, right? Am I pronouncing that correct? Okay, I had, a, I had a grilled carry on that the other day. Right. So, so it was such a wonderful performance. Um, I I really loved your relationship. With the uh, with your son on the film, and um, I first I ask you are are do you have kids? Or? I do. I have a six year old. Okay, and so I know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I got you, bro. <laughs> so do you feel that like that was easy for you to be such a a, a, a such a, a a powerful father on screen? And I I mean me personally, I felt there was such a great connection between you and and, and the, the kid who played your child, and you know it was like man like. Again, I was like, "Oh man, I'm. I hope I'm that kind of dad." <laughs> yeah. So, was what did you feel that being a father was, you know, kind of helped in that, or it was like, "Oh," or um, I think so. I mean, first of all, shout out to Josiah. He's the one who played Ed. Yeah. He's a <laughs> terrific kid. He's a student, student of Sifu Mafia. Yeah, yeah. 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 sweet our, our friends, but... Sweet, sweet kid. Um, I think so. I mean, when I first read the script. Um, first thing that popped up was 
that he's a father. And um, at the time, he, my son was six, I was six, he was four. And I was going through a lot, you know, when I was, you know, during that period of my life, you know, my, my, fa my father just retired, my, both of my parents just retired. And now I have a four-year-old son, and I'm sort of at this apex point of my life. And I'm looking at him, looking at my dad, and I was like, what is this life about? And here comes this script about, really, in many ways, it's a, a coming-of-age story, but for folks our age. And you, you, there's moments where you kind of go through of, of you know, you're, you change, you, you look back, am I the same person that I was? And, that's kind of what this character was to me. Um, and so having the character be a father, it just added an extra hook for me in terms of like understanding the balance of your, you trying to do your, be your own person still and still trying to you know, um, find a way to, to uh, achieve some of the goals that you still might have. And finding that balance is really difficult. So I saw a lot of Danny in myself. Um, so yeah, certainly having that relationship with my son and, and seeing that Danny and, and Ed relationship, there's definitely a lot of you know similarities there. Um, and there have been moments with my son now where he's asking me questions where I'm like, I don't, I don't know what the answer would be to that. But you try your best. You know, you don't want to say anything that would cause any therapy 20 <laughs> years later, but it, you know, you try your best. I love the way that you are such a strong anchor in this film for the Three Tigers. Um, and I want to find out, like, you know, obviously I know that, uh, if you guys don't know, they shot in one month, I believe. It was like, boom. And for a feature film, that is, that is incredible. Absolutely incredible. So um, before I finish, Hats off to production and the rest of the guys for you guys being able to pull that is I love the chemistry that you bring, and I love that how you're such a strong anchor to not only for, for Hing, but to everybody else in the Three Tigers. Was it hard to create that kind of chemistry, or did you guys just, you guys got together and you said, you know, hey, we got that killer crew, let's, let's roll with this? I love these guys, man. Um, and, and it's, um, I haven't seen him since we shot. It's just uh, a lot. Um, Bao, I just I can't say enough. If you're a young director out there, a filmmaker, and you get a chance to speak with Bao, you should speak with him because what what's missing in a lot of uh, in a lot of films is the opposite. is the environment that creates the kind of possibilities that he did with human beings. We are naturally guarded people. You walk into places you're not familiar with, you get more guarded. You're meeting strange people that are playing characters, you're even more guarded. And somehow he managed to put together a family of people that like, from the minute you walked into the space, it was just all love. So like, you just felt this, um, this is calm and this trust that was like, like I've never felt, I've been doing this for 30 years, and I, I've never felt it before. And the uh, level of professionalism was off the chain. And, these two gentlemen next to me are truly uniquely special people and I was just fortunate to see that early and realize that the best thing I could do is um, be available. And um, believe me, the way Ron was eating, um, <laughs> the availability was on uh, lit. Like, every was, night, every night. Every night. Every night. And he never ate alone. So like it was, uh, it was just. Um, Come on, guys, eat. That's what we're going after. Bring your script and let's just eat. Let's go with the script, buddy. Yeah. So once, uh, once I kind of fell in love with these guys, and it was like I really cared for them, like truthfully cared for them. So like um, going through these moments with them was like um, really a real life experience. So I was really happy to see that you got that, that um, you were able to um, really feel that because it is, um, it's, it's, I'm an African American and I'm raised in the South and I just have to say the Asian community is, um, I mean, and everywhere I go, anybody I meet, they're gonna know that it's just so different than what you think. The love and the warmth and the way that they invite you in and how you get tended to and the way that it's just amazing. It was amazing to me. It was shocking and amazing, and that's really changed me. Uh, changed my life, my perspective on things. 
it's allowed me to speak on uh, on it because I lived in it, and it's just loving. It's very loving. So, um, believe me when I tell you, um, the world will see that. Uh, don't worry about the hate. I've, uh, trust me, I've lived in it and with it. The love, the love, this love in this community, the love that the Asian community has. Cause I, it's just real, strong, it's commitment, and the code, the honor, and all that's real. It's gonna beat all that ridiculousness. In the end, we're gonna be all right. So like, I, I'm just excited about this film because it's gonna, it, it is all about that. It's all about love and the code and the honor and the commitment and the community. It is what it is, you know, you can't, you can't make it something it's not, no matter how many times you say it. So uh, I'm gonna ride with you, so like, um, I just, I'm, I'm just so overwhelmed by the whole experience and really just feel very honored to be part of it. Mr. Yuji over there, you want to stand up and, and join us real quick for two seconds? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 Kind of bouncing off uh, of, of Carrie the other day, and I really felt this was something special. Um, this is kind of one of those movies like, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll watch it again, absolutely. Like, I, I feel like I want to watch it again after this. Um, what was your moment? when you kind of saw the ball rolling, I mean, because obviously this ball was rolling fast, that you really felt like, okay, you know, I'm really a part of something special, and this is, we're just, we're just gonna take this rocket to the moon, and like, you know, what, what was that moment for you? Well, first of all, I just wanted to say that uh, the, the other producers did all the work. <laughs> I, I just stood around trying to look like I was a producer. I was an actor trying to be a producer. Uh, Michael Velasquez was just incredible. Dan Gilgard was awesome. And Ellen Duong, who's not here, he'll be here tonight, was incredible. Uh, these guys really busted their ass. And, um, you know, it shows on, on, on film. Uh, all I gotta say about these guys here uh, and our cast, a crew, uh, just a phenomenal group. Uh, we're so blessed to have these guys. I, I mean, I've worked in this business uh, since 1980 is when I first started. <clears throat> and um, through all the experiences I've had, there's not one that really matched uh, this, this set. It was, um, it was a big ohana, it was a big family. And these guys um, worked their butts off. These three, they had this, this bond, this chemistry, and it was so incredible to watch these guys work. And they would go out to eat together, they would, you know, rehearse together, they would break down the script together, they would fight together, and it was just like having three brothers on set. But there was a lot of love with, between those three brothers. Um, when we finished this, this shoot, and it was, uh, it was a grueling shoot to be able to try and get this done, I think it was a five week shoot, and uh, to shoot a feature film in five weeks is, is really tough. But at the end of the day, we, this is the last day of shooting, and I'll never forget, and I always bring this up when I talk about the, this whole experience. When we were sitting at this, uh, in this garage in, in uh, Chinatown in uh, Seattle, <clears throat> I look at the table, and it's a long table, and this is the last meal that we're gonna have together uh, before we, we wrap up uh, the show. And it was so, so incredible, it is this feeling of, of family. They all were sitting there at this long table and, and just having conversations and just reminiscing and talking about all this stuff that, you know, throughout the whole shoot. And uh, I tell you, man, there's no better feeling than having that kind of camaraderie on a set. So I, I and along with the other producers, I, we're truly blessed, blessed to have these guys and this crew. So. Um, I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you. So and thank much. you, Bao. Bao was awesome yes. too. I gotta say, I worked with Bao before on a, on a short film up in Seattle, and uh, he, his his ability to be calm under fire, uh, to be able to be open, to let these these guys work and play, uh, is is such a joy and such a. It's an anomaly in this business because there are a lot of people with a lot of egos, but with, with Bao, he knew what he wanted, he, yet uh, he didn't have that ego attached to it. So um, hats off to Bao because he was the captain of the ship and he helmed the ship in the right direction. So um, what you see on screen is, is 
thanks to um, the leadership and that comes down to bow. Carrie, you want me to grill you or do we, did I grill you enough over drinks the other day? I think you might have. Well, that's you. What do you want to ask? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the reason why I, I, I knew about this project is uh, me and Carrie go, go back. And, and uh, uh, so, hats off to Carrie Wong and also Ken, who's not here tonight. Who's one of the other. So, uh, for you guys who are wondering who, who Ken was, Ken is the, 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 uh, the, the evil fourth disciple. So, but he was, uh, um, he's also uh, was part of the stunt team. So, Kerry, um, what what uh, what in this movie like made it like you know different for you than like some of the other projects like you know because I know like the list goes on and on. We can talk shop all day long, but okay. well, I mean, you like I said like you know you know what what made you did this different like okay this is this we're gonna really make this sing like what what was it different for you in this one? Well, yeah, I mean, testament to all the actors uh, that jumped in to throw the punches, kicks, and uh, made it look good. Uh, you made the acting department look really good and everything looked fantastic. Um, for speaking for Ken Kitawa, the action director, as well as Sam Locke, he's the other stunt coordinator. Um, we looked at this and we saw the script, did the breakdown, and we thought, okay, this is definitely something special regarding how the action moves forward and it's very character driven that each fight wasn't just an exhibition of movement, but it moved the story from what happened before the fight and after the fight, the story moves forward. Um, that was very important. And moreover, it also reveals something about the character. Uh, for example, oh, uh, Hanging's hair isn't really hair. <laughs> uh, so things of that nature are important, are paramount. And um, with the schedule that we had was pretty intense, but we got it all done. And at the same time, um, everyone stayed safe. You know, that's what makes it special for all of us. And, you know, to finally see it on screen. Yeah, sorry. Uh, and, that would be really special. And for those of you who didn't, didn't notice, Carrie was in the karate dojo, and I think your head got kicked into the wall, right? Oh, yeah, that was close. <laughs> <laughs> Opened up maybe to some of the, the crowds, or I was, I was joking with Carrie, said, so, you know, you got to be careful. You're going to be a crowd full of seafoods here, and they're going to really grill you guys. <laughs> All right, so uh, does anyone from the crowd have some questions they may like to ask either the cast or their crew? All right, Nikki, I'll give you one. This is my son, Nikki. Did some of you did your own stunts? Did some of us do? I did all my own stunts. I did all my own stunts. Yeah, I did one. I did it too. I did it too. Oh. Me, I, <laughs> me, I was just done. So you already know. <laughs> so yes, Nikki. Awesome. awesome. Run, 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 run the streets. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I just wanted to ask, um, what are the four of your martial arts backgrounds in this very curious? Oh. I know. Man, you, 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 hey, you. Yeah, Matt, you can make first. Oh, uh, yeah, my, my, uh, Background is mainly uh, Kenpo, Okinawan Kenpo, and, uh, and American Kenpo. Uh, Kyokushin, uh, Muay Thai, uh, Tang Sudo, Filipino Screma, Boxing. I also, I also did uh, some Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and some uh, stick, stick fighting and some Aikido. I'm guard, weak chug. <laughs> I can't compete with that CV, guys. Like, how do I? I just did Taekwondo. That's it. Dance. And dance. <laughs> well, I, I did a lot. I, I was much more of a boxer, and uh, you already know I can dance and fly. We dance. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, which is um, which is why it was such a. Uh, uh, just a masterful job by our stunt team because if you, uh, they yeah. took, they not only took um, what we could do, uh, I wanted to play around with jujitsu, I wanted to change some things up. So what they would do is watch your movements, what you're naturally good with, and then they would just go yeah. into the lab and come back with this whole dance of like, it was just really an amazing, uh, 
Uh, these guys, I, I, I did Undisputed 3, I, like, I messed with stunt guys before. These guys were, were storytellers. And I, that's what I love about martial arts, is the beauty of it. You know, the story that's being told. So like, uh, my appreciation for it is just uh, over the roof because of it, but box. Is there gonna be another movie? Oh, oh good question. Because good question. at the end, um, I saw that the son learned some kung fu oh, too. Good, good question. question. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I think we're all interested in what happens to Ed, right? So yeah. maybe I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Most memorable scene that you uh, enjoy while making this movie? All of them. Oh. <laughs> uh, you want to go down the line again? Maybe, maybe, Bao, you can start. Yeah, I don't know about most memorable. Um, I think it was also just the feeling. I think um, just seeing them all, these tigers and Carter, in a lot of ways, he's, he's almost the fourth tiger, but never really got his stripes. So it's like. <laughs> Uh, it's a sequel, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a sequel. Uh, just them um, uh, interacting during lunchtime in the off hours or in the off, you know, when we're, we're shooting. And the fact, you know, sometimes when you shoot, sometimes actors just go off and they go to their trailer. But guess what? We don't have a trailer. What so, trailer? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> trailer? But they don't have to interact until they're on the scene and, the, you know, when, the, when they're on the camera. But when, when we weren't shooting, they were still talking to each other. They're still hanging out. They were still wanting. So that to me, I felt like there was something that the camera will show and it will see that you know that's something that uh is just really magical and you can't really create that you can't manufacture it and just the uh the connection that they all had i just really appreciate that throughout the whole shoot um even though uh, the majority of my uh, scenes were in the big uh, uh fight at the school i still personally uh go back to the the, the first day with me and Ron, That's, that, that was the most memorable scene for me because I was so nervous being on the movie and then having the banter with Ron and uh, the, a lot of insults are still on the cutting room floor. It's gotta be outtakes. There's a, lo there's a lot of outtakes. So on iTunes, okay, I guess on the iTunes, iTunes extras you can see all the extra insults that didn't make it into the movie. Because <laughs> there was some oh, yeah. good. Oh, yeah. Can you really? Yeah. Oh. There's some good all stuff there, so you oh, should, you should oh, check that out. That was the most memorable <laughs> thing. So good. Yeah, I think uh, for me too, like Matt, as far as like setting off the, the, the tone and humor that, you know, Val kind of put down in the script, like, and let us play, that was, that, that really was a lot of fun for me. But it, that's, it's a hard question because I really love that scene, but I also enjoyed, you know, so many other scenes with, you know, the two other tigers. Um, it was a brotherhood. I mean, even with Matt, it was all a brotherhood. Like, even when we improv and rehearsed before we started shooting, we already started forming, you know, that, that those relationships. So, uh, like Bao, I think I think the whole thing was just special to me. Um, the first part of the filming process was just the family, um, my wife Karen and Ed. But as soon as these two came, completely different movie. The experience um, and I mean not to say that that was better or worse but um, really to what was the kid's name his question oh uh, Connor Connor the best memorable moment for me was when we were in the pool scene because everything leading up to that was just talking and just adults doing this right but when the fun part happened was when we were there, first day of the fight sequences, best. That was awesome. I was so excited. I was like, oh great, we get to fight, yay! But I didn't really do well in the fighting. Uh, for me, it was um, actually before we ever got to Seattle. It was the improv mm. session because um, I read this script. Uh, I turned to my wife and I said, this is either going to be corny as hell or this is going to be a classic. It all just depends on the players. I got to see who the players are. So then we had this improv session and I was fortunate enough to not go first. So I got to watch these two uh, spiring off and then and Bao orchestrating it. And they started asking these questions, these five layer 
questions and I turned, I called my wife on the break. I'm like, oh, um, this is gonna be good. Cause um, most of the time, sometimes you get involved in projects and then like, you think you're too much or you're not enough. And uh, then you, you see the other people playing and you realize, oh my God, these guys are just like me. So like, right then I knew that um, for the next six weeks, I didn't wanna do nothing else. So it just got better from there. Awesome, great. Can we have Philip too? Philip, you want to share? Phil, oh. Come share the circle. Come share. Yeah. Come share, yeah. Is he a bad guy? Philip, are you a bad guy? Not a bad guy. Not a bad guy right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Phil, you want to share? Yeah, I'm a bad guy. Yeah, okay. 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 It was a, a great experience. Um, I mean, uh, my favorite part was uh, obviously the pool scene because that was the scene that we got to do the most uh, action in. And uh, it was kind of the first time I kind of got to see, you know, all three of the Tigers actually work and, and, and put on their moves. And it was really awesome because working with actors, usually you have a lot of stunt doubles and you have a lot of people jumping in and they're fighting, but you know, the three tigers, they did such a great job just doing everything. They did their whole fight basically, and it was really special to see that, um, you know, coming from a martial arts background, seeing them work so hard. And during our rehearsals, you know, Carrie, Sam, and Ken, the stunt coordinators, you know, uh, put together the fight scenes and they worked really hard at it and they made it look so great. So. You know, the fight scene in the pool was really awesome to, um, you know, be a part of. And, you know, I was a little nervous throwing lines and with uh, Elaine. And, uh, you know, it was really cool, like, just being able to do that with him and having a little part. It was uh, my favorite part. So thank you for having thank me. Thank you. We love you. We love you guys. So my question is, I guess, to the director and the producer. Like, when you write a movie such as this, and you see their chemistry, do you change things as you go along or do you have, like do you ever change things around just because you see how great things are going or how does that work? Go with the flow, yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's kind of a blueprint. The script usually is, kind of gives you the foundation and if you are able, lucky enough to have great facile players come in and, and, and lift it, you kind of want to let them run. So uh, a lot happens even just personality-wise. There's different chemistries, and so I, uh, I really wanted to give them that space to ad-lib or do improv and just kind of play around the scene uh, because that's always a little bit funner and kind of keeps it fresh and different. And there were many different options. We'd let them do different uh, alt lines. So like, if you go to iTunes, and <laughs> is it, do you have to purchase it or what? You do have to. You have to purchase on iTunes to be able to see these uh, wonderful alt takes and kind of different things because that's what happens. We had a, 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 a um, an embarrassment of riches with all the footage and choices for our editor to kind of deal with all these things and hone it into you know a cohesive thing. But so they gave us uh, many, 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 many choices and many wonderful options. How many times did you get, you get into the face with the tennis ball before you master the skill? <laughs> how many times did you get? How many, how many times, times you get, did I get? The tennis ball ahead? Balls in my face. <laughs> Is that your question, essentially, right? Okay. Um, many times. Yeah, it was, uh, I practiced that quite a bit. It, it was the first thing that I caught in the script. And when I asked Bao, I was like, Is there, how are you guys, how are you guys going to do this? Is it, do I have to do this? And he said, yeah, you have to, there's no stunt double, so you got to figure it out. And that's the first thing what I bought. I went to Amazon and I bought the tennis ball with the strap thing and started messing with it. And it took forever. Like the, the, the part where I got maybe 10 hits on it was probably like the best one, probably, I think. It was more like six. All right, maybe six. <laughs> I'm exaggerating, guys, I'm sorry. But yeah, that, yeah, a lot. The, and Bao would just keep going, yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going. And I would look and be like, okay, all right. Where's my trailer? <laughs> uh, let's see, Lance, you had your hand up first. So, uh, did you guys shoot a lot of cameras at the same time on the stunts and the dialogue? Did you use a couple <laughs> cameras at the same time? 
Lance is a cameraman by trade, just let you guys know. All the additional cameras are with Elaine and the guy's trailer. We only had one camera for that one. Sean was a beast. Any particular challenges and interests in having to work with one camera? Or? Uh, I think it was, it's good from the lighting perspective, is being able to focus on one thing. I think having multiple cameras is good for coverage, and it could have helped us in certain ways, but it was nice to really just be focused on one thing at a time, and really focus on one frame at a time. I think it was good, for me at least. First of all, the script was amazing. The script was incredible. <laughs> Gentlemen, you, you brought it to life. Uh, I was moved from the beginning to the end because what I saw on the screen, I saw myself. Mm. I saw the struggles as an older martial artist now and the aches and pains when you wake up in the morning and how you feel after the training. Uh, I saw that there. I saw the camaraderie, camaraderie between the brothers and, and the camaraderie that I share with my Kung Fu brother. Uh, I saw the relationship that you had with the wife and your son, and I saw that in my life as well. Uh, so as a director, I commend you for the work that you've done. I commend all the actors for all the, uh, the work that you've done and, and the, the desire to be part of this and, and to share it with us. Uh, I honor you and I respect all of you and the producers and any, everyone. Uh, I have to say that this movie really moved me and this is probably one of the best martial arts, martial arts movies I've ever seen. Wow. I really have to say that. It's not about fighting, it's about being together, community, the honor of, of being martial artists no matter what style you, you choose. You know, we're a subculture of brethren uh, that no matter what style you have, we, we're all connected. So uh, as a director and the actors and the, and, uh, and the producers and, and the writer, uh, I thank you. I thank you for this. Thank you. Well, thank you for the wonderful words. Uh, and just to join in to what you're saying, what we wanted to do is uh, to make this as a love letter to Asian American or Asian Canadian culture and martial arts too, because a lot of movies we see in martial arts are either set in China or old Hong Kong, and just like, this is a different culture, but here, it's a particular culture, and then just to point out, being tugged uh, back and forth between East and West, our responsibilities uh, in the Western culture, but also the old cultures of your Sifu and stuff like that, those are all the kind of conflicts that we all deal with, and wanted to kind of pay, pay, uh, shed light on and pay tribute to, and uh, even just even, I'll just speak, you know, in terms of the creative choice, right? So you had Sifu, you, do, you talk about like Cantonese or Mandarin, whether the choices, whether the portrayal of the history, especially for most Chinatowns, is, is kind of a Cantonese heavy culture. And so we wanted to also kind of show, showcase that. Even now, when Cantonese, you know, is a bit of on a, on a, on a kind of less, less um, visible state um, and stuff like in the choices of, uh, doing surnames and Sifu, do you go Wang Sifu or Sifu Wang? Because Sifu Wang is also an, an American, I would say, evolution incorporating that idea. So we wanted to kind of make choices specifically that this is an Asian American martial arts film. Giving a round of applause to all the cast and crew for this wonderful story and thank you once again. Um, yes, yeah, please.